Good morning and welcome. My name is Ray Hano and I'm, I'm here to present uh, Securing Kubernetes the Upstream Way. So we're all here because we have an interest in cloud-native security. And of course, cloud-native involves many open source projects. And some projects, like Kubernetes, uh, have many downstream distributions. So Kubernetes, if you're not familiar, has over 120 distributions. So it's logical if we improve the security posture upstream, then downstream inherits those improvements. So let's dive into securing upstream Kubernetes. First, let's do a little review. And Kubernetes is, of course, organized into 24 special interest groups. We commonly refer to these groups as SIGs. And uh, the, all of them have a common purpose to advance the project. But I'm here to show a few examples of what Kubernetes SIG security has done to improve, these, to improve the security posture of the Kubernetes project. SIG security officially started in 2020. And it actually grew out of a working group for the third party security audit that was published in 2019. And SIG Security's sole mission is to make Kubernetes more secure. And we do so in a number of ways. So the SIG has grown into four sub projects security docs, security tooling, self assessments, and third party security audit. And we'll touch a little bit on each one. So if you're not familiar, Kubernetes is not secure by default. So the security docs subproject have added documentation to Kubernetes.io to help users secure their clusters more better, like adding an RBAC good practice guide, a security checklist, which is a basic guidance on authentication, authorization, network policy, pod security, uh, Linux kernel security, admission controller, pod placement, and container images. So it's a good starting point for those who are not familiar with securing their Kubernetes cluster to start with. They've also added a good practice guide on Kubernetes secrets. And in the works, there's a multi-topic hardening guide, and there's a page or part of, that, of the hardening guide is up available on authentication mechanisms. There's also a pull request open for a hardening guide on how to configure the scheduler. The security tooling subproject has improved Kubernetes security by adding uh, several tooling, like uh, they've added container image scanning into a Kubernetes release. They've added a CVE feed that's live, and they're currently working in bringing some automation to that CVE feed. They're also working to bring Go Vuln Check, which is, is the CLI tool which checks for known vulnerabilities in Go. The self-assessment subproject was inspired by TAG Security uh, and their self-assessments of CNCF projects. So if you're not familiar with TAG Security, uh, they do many self-assessment CNCF projects, usually before they, they graduate into the next stage. They use the stride model for their self-assessments for uh, specific focus areas of Kubernetes, just like Cluster API. So the Cluster API self-assessment is published, and they're currently working on a self-assessment on etcd. Lastly, the third-party security audits, of course, coordinates third-party security audits. Uh, the first one was published in 2019. That was based back on Kubernetes 1.13.4. And the last one was published last year, last in April 2023. That was based on 124.0. And we are currently scoping on the next one currently. So we're going to take a look at a few of these findings from both audits. The first audit in 2019, there were 37 findings, but I'm going to highlight only three of these findings. And, and these three findings are about sensitive information being exposed in some way in logs or environment variables. And all three motivated a long-term preventive solution through what's called an, a Kubernetes enhancement pr proposal. So with this Kubernetes enhancement proposal, we've added an enhancement called the Defend Against Logging Static Analysis. So this enhancement uh, adds a taint propagation analysis tool called GoFlow Levy as part of Kubernetes CI CD system called Prow. So within Prowl, it's able to use GoFlow Levy to test pull requests. And GoFlow Levy is configured so that it takes any field that contains a secret or any method calls that returns a secret and checks if it reaches K-log, a, a K-log logging method. And K-log is a fork of G-log, which are the execution logs of for Go. So with GoFlow Levy in this in Kubernetes CI CD system, we can detect logging of secrets during testing and block any pull requests 
requests that log secrets. So this is a great example of instead of doing a one-off fix uh, to fix a finding, which was done for these, these audits result motivated an enhancement that betters Kubernetes in the long term. So every future release and downstream distributions benefit from this enhancement. The last audit was published in 2023, and there were 19 findings from this audit. And, uh, out of these 19 findings, there was, uh, the highest risk level was a medium risk level, and there were only six findings with a medium risk level. So I'm only gonna highlight four of these medium risk levels, and these four are related to some sort of privilege escalation where users can do something and they're not supposed to do that. So the first one, common certificate authority possible for a client CA and request header CA. So this is when a user can actually gain uh, cluster admin privileges when they're not supposed to, when the client CA and the request header CA are the same, with also in, in a, a, specific, a specific condition with a setting called request header allowed names. So if the client CA and the request header CA are the same and a specific setting with request header allowed names, uh, then the user can become gain cluster admin. Next uh, finding is called path traversal namespace specifier. So when a user is not supposed to have access to objects or specific objects in Kubernetes, they can actually gain the full path of these objects and have access to, full, to, the, to the full path by using the directory traversal sequence or dot dot as a namespace in a, in a request to the Kubernetes API server. So this was actually fixed, so there's a, add a check added, so this cannot be done. The last two findings I want to review uh, from the audit uh, both deal with privilege escalation. One is the redirection of API server traffic to Kubelet, so this is privilege escalation. So this is with uh, the Kubernetes API server proxy feature. So the proxy feature is these uh, users can manipulate the API server to authenticate itself, and users can get cluster admin, but there's some caveats to this. The user actually needs to have specific uh, combination of get, create, and patch uh, permissions on specific resources for this to be done. So in this way, the API server recognizes, or the user kind of manipulates the API server if it recognizes the proxy target as kubelet, and with that specific combo of get patch create, they can gain cluster admin. Uh, lastly, uh, the last one's privilege escalation via node proxy permission. This was actually reported in a blog post from AquaSec and also reported by NCC Group as well. Uh, this is a finding where a user who does not have permission uh, can actually execute any commands they want to on, on any running pods. So in this scenario, users can execute any command they want to on pods by using a proxy request through the API server to a kubelet. In this case, the API server is going to use its own client cert to authenticate, and the user now has full permissions on the kubelet API. And they can run any uh, and execute any command they want to on this running node. So these examples of privileged escalations from the 2023 audit not only revealed how users can get cluster admin permissions or be able to run any commands you want on running nodes when they're not supposed to, they also come with recommendations on how to prevent them. So for that, you have to go read the audit findings, and I suggest everyone to do so. It's on GitHub and Kubernetes slash SIG security. Lastly, like I mentioned, everything I've talked about, including the work from the uh, previous subprojects, is also, is also on this found in the same GitHub repo in Kubernetes slash SIG security. So what we've learned from Kubernetes security audits and SIG security, Kubernetes is not perfect, but as the project matures with new enhancements and features, uh, security audits and the work of SIG security are more important. So we have new features for every release, like a new feature called Cube Control Debug command, which was created recently in 1.30. Uh, the cube control debug command, if it's done with pod, you could debug a pod with cube control debug pod. It'll start an ephemeral container on that pod so you have someone could troubleshoot that pod. Or you could also cube control debug node, which starts a new node on this uh, new pod on this node to troubleshoot that node. But that pod is in the node's host namespaces and can access the node's file system. Kubernetes is not secure by default, so users need to know this, and we should improve our guides and add new guides and docs on security practices to Kubernetes.io. Lastly, community secures Kubernetes. A few people can't do this alone. 
So hopefully some of you will join Kubernetes 6 security. You can find us in, in the Kubernetes Slack. Uh, there's also more information in the, on the GitHub page as well. And hopefully there's more folks that, that, will come, that will come and join and help Kubernetes more secure. So the work I've highlighted is actually done from many contributors. So I want to thank them. Uh, first off, the co-chairs of Six Security, Tabitha Sable, and Ian Coldwater, and a few, uh, several other contributors like Pushkar Jalgokar, Savita Ragnathan, Clay, Kaylin Edwards, Ala Dubery, Rory McCune, Robert Ficagilia, Ian Smarts, Patrick Romberg, and Aaron Small, and there's so many more. So thank you to them, and thank you to a whole lot more folks in Six Security, and thank you for attending my, my talk. Thank you.